Did you ever play Shadows of Evil and not understand it? Well, today we're about to figure it out. My boy Rake Fire Impala the year is, is explaining the Shadows of Evil for us. The lack of an understanding of the English language gets to play the highly anticipated That's all of us. Shadows of Evil. That's every single one of us, man. This game looks gorgeous. I love it. No, it was longer. Like no, Zombies is the longest thing I've ever waited for in gaming apart from Kingdom Hearts, and that's factual. One year of your life would literally be like, wait, let's pop this into death. That's just about to open up the Excel sheets, bro. The fundamental theory of calculus. This right is Shadows of Evil. We're whipping out mathematics to understand. It would be at least 56% of your life, if my calculations are correct, of course. I'm not a scientist. So when you're that fetus, given your age and your grasp of the English language, or lack thereof, you're going to open this map up for the first <laughs> time, skip the intro cutscene all to get them perspective. Everybody in 2015 playing Shadows of Evil, this is you. This is a literal representation of you. To not understand even 1% <laughs> of <laughs> and you but can't understand one percent of the story. You, you yeah, me. Really be expected to understand a map which utilizes time travel, dimension hopping, paradoxes, and multi. I had no idea that was all in Shadows of Evil, fam. Listen, all I remember is last gen Rick Toffa comes out of a portal and grabs the summoning key. I, what is the summoning key? <laughs> <laughs> And this is where I come in to give advice to any young and aspiring authors out there. If you feel that your story could be better if it had multiple dimensions. That's a no. It's bad. Don't do yeah, it. Yeah, no. You Why? feel that paradoxes might add a bit of spice to your story. No. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Dude, I'm don't do time. Why would anybody do time travel? Time travel, you only whip out unless you're One Piece and you're a thousand episodes in and you're like... It's time. <laughs> We've explored everything else. It's time. Coming <laughs> back to the hypothetical fetus scenario that I pulled out of my ass, I think it's pretty obvious that that fetus is yours truly, and it. Hello. Grown up but it's really all of us at the end of the day. It still didn't really. Because I'm gonna be honest, there's probably two people in the whole world that can completely explain to me what this map was about. I've played this map now for probably over eight years, and I still can't tell you what the whole purpose of this map is about, man. Give a shit when it came to the shadows, Lord. Not gonna lie, like I boot the map up and true. Just doing shit. We didn't even care. What does the mark or the curse of the beast mean most probably a euphemism for some sort of substance abuse as is my favorite pastime hobby of course and i keep referring to myself as it you know treyarch was on something though for real because bro. i'm literally the blue i mean how did they scenario. think of this how did they think of this stuff bro I like it a lot. If it <laughs> the power of being the John Clip. Being that can fully utilize the fundamental theory of calculus, I could finally sit down this month and try to make sense of this map. At surface level, a light-hearted 1940s noir type shit. Like, I don't claim to know the correct adjectives. I still think this is the greatest map layout and the greatest map I've ever seen from a Treyarch game in terms of the look. Like, there is no map that makes you feel like Shadows of Evil. I sound like an IGN review right now. <laughs> when you walk around and actually I mean, look at that. Things, really, it's. I mean, come on. Lighthearted. And I you know? Most of the people who watch me can already sense where this video is going to go. For real, for real. Stay tuned for the five <laughs> hour real, analysis real. of the stories written by the totally sane man who had a cat that went by the name of. Uh, my lawyer yeah no i'm gonna be honest the the cthulhu lovecrafty and all lore the it, this is gonna get dark so strap in ladies and gentlemen advise me to continue no yeah further. strap the in scenario that inspired me to even talk about this today was when i accidentally happened to hold f on this little telephone box <laughs> prompting an audio and meanwhile you're just trying to the gobble gum over here <laughs> some reporter talking to a mysterious mr rapt hey mr rapt is checking in so i'm here finally Taking in the sights, sounds, and smells of Morg City. I know you. It's so funny because I've heard this quote like already in the six hour entire zombie storyline video. Instantly forgot it, you know? It's just incredible how the mind recycles information. I'm here to write a piece about the city's bustling nightlife and theater scene and the characters that inhabit it, but things are getting okay. kind of strange. Mr. Rapture. Even no one seems to want to talk about it. Something is definitely off about this city. Just last week there was a media shower. A freaking media shower. And everybody acted like it was no... We didn't see that in the map now, did we? No, I don't think... So, this was like a prequel. Dude, this map was so good. The amount of lore they put in this map was insane. Big thing. Then, the mold showed up. All the over the mold. city. In the dark, damp alleys, 
There's a strange kind of fungus growing. Uh, gamer so gunk, weird. man. Even weirder, but yeah, that's gamer dead. gunk, bro. Then people started getting sick. Yep. At first it just made them delirious. That's gamer yeah. gunk. Then they really got sick. I can't let that Why gamer gunk touch you, away. man. People finally started talking about it. I spoke to one guy in his 80s, a fruit seller, at the local market. He said something similar happened in New England in 1882. When I tried to press him on it, he just lowered his head and ignored me. Oh, yeah. dude, I wonder if that might have also been the Shadow Man as well, saying that to him. Because there's a newspaper in Derizendrak showing the old London. I don't know if you guys remember with the plunger side Easter egg on that map. That's very interesting. That's Something definitely ain't right here. Yeah. Now hearing this... Such a cool quote. It was definitely peaked. Like, to think that this map that is quite visibly oozing with character... It's so insane. ...actually have something going on inside it. Like, leave it to my donkey ass to get surprised at that. For real, for real. I, of course... No, there are so many letters. Like, there's a literal zombie outside of the map holding the letter M. And that, like, doesn't even get solved, I feel like, until way later on, until BO4, people started piecing the bits together in this map. Like insane how did they think of this man and on how here some of the other how did they do this to try to piece together the story behind can we map. ever get this back in call of duty either i don't know it's now all too mysterious map it has always been a pet peeve of mine how most of the quote-unquote easter eggs and zombies are just quests whose stuff <laughs> look up online never really solving anything like here it's literally just re like listen I think the way they think of Easter eggs is like Blundell, like in his mind, it like makes sense logically from step one to eight. But then when he explains it, it's just like, what? <laughs> you know? Feeling like I'm 80 years old again. Playing but yeah, Xbox. this is how most of it feels. Radio, it just feels like a chore list. Stuff out, except this time I actually understand English. But from what I could tell, there happened to be a reporter paid by the enigmatic Mr. Rap to explore the yes, quaint sirs. Dwork City. It's gotta However, be the Shadow Man, right? it does right? turn out to be anything but quaint spending time inside it. The reporter goes to this market headed by a man who speaks of his drunk uncle who spoke of how a dark shadow will be cast over the city that an apocalypse will unfold held back though by the ancient order and the keepers now hearing the every time i hear ancient order i just think of nine in the chaos storyline bro i made a tweet about how everybody was like so sad about the new chaos map being canceled like with dlc3 and bo4 and people are so mad bro they were like bro it was the youtubers you guys did it we didn't do it man it was BO4. Y'all hated the HUD before we even played it, bro. Come on now. This, the reporter realizes that the uncle was not only a drunkard, but also someone abusing several kinds of narcotics and quite possibly some shrooms obtained from the forests of the remote island of Tasmania. The reporter walks around. Treyarch must be some of the craziest type of people when this BO3 map came out. Like, can you imagine the amount of illegal things they have done at this point in time? And in here, Insane. several hush hush whispers and rumors of this ancient order and concludes that it must be some cult allegedly dealing with human sacrifice holding so much power that they practically pull the strings behind the guise that is Morg City. He Sounds familiar? <laughs> and talks about how he's done several jobs for this misdirect in like investigating strange artifacts and metals in Russia and the South Pacific. One of them would of course be the all too familiar summoning key. That the reporter was yeah, so what is this? Mr. Rapp to what is it? Up Easy Street. It's important to note that as time went on, the reporter fell deeper and deeper into a delusional state of paranoia and fear. He grew disdain for Mr. Rapt, noting that he never even met the guy as he always stayed in the yeah. shadows. We've what never seen him, right? Feeling manifested itself in delirium. If it wasn't the rumors he'd heard or the strange evil chants and whispering he'd hear walking around, it would definitely be the letter he would later receive from a familiar Ah, team. here we go. He had doomed the world. The letter with the M on it. Yes. It's not until later in Derisendrak that we learn in a decoded cipher what transpired. Ah. In the reporter was in quite the dilemma. But dude, we didn't solve this cipher until really later on. That's what makes this so crazy. Like the level of detail. And it's so crazy. Also, I'm seeing right now. There, I'm going to make a video about this. There's a whole new BO4 room room on Voyage of Despair that just found got open. That map has the best side Easter eggs in all of Call of Duty Zombies. This is a terrible map, but still, it is crazy what is being solved for this game even in 2023. 
That is having crazy. To choose between two unknown figures that seem to be stalking him for what he would later believe to be an artifact with world ending capabilities. Wow. He thought about how many others have eyes on him as well, in a question not helping his paranoia. And it's not helped that in the lore, Richtofen himself approaches the reporter for the artifact, likely confirming the suspicions the reporter had, as he is described by Richtofen. It's all Richtofen ploy. Acting wildly and waving a letter in his hand, telling him to stay away. Yeah. The artifact was, of course, held in this box sealed by what yep. can be inferred as ancient magic and upon Richtofen's request of it the reporter attacked him dying to a knife in the chest as Richtofen defended himself oh that's so cool see I didn't even understand that whole scenario and how this reporter ended up so Richtofen took that homie out dang could GG could the reporter be this dead guy with a knife in his chest outside the map holding a letter with a big ass M on it 100% I mean that's absolutely it Nah, I couldn't be. That's too on the nose. Now, the cost of <laughs> and human sacrifices okay, has always dude. been a thing in antiquity. However, that's only an indirect influence at play here. As everyone saw coming before even clicking onto this video, the direct influence is actually a story by none other than of course. the glorious owner of a HP Lovecraft. Cat. HP Lovecraft, critically yep. acclaimed Harry Potter Lovecraft, baby. And of course, for coming up with the uh, Bloodborne in the early 1900s. Now, reading the Shadow yeah. of Innsmouth. That man has just made Elden Ring, essentially. Every Elden Ring game that man has essentially been a part of You'll at this see point. You'll see direct parallels between it and Shadows of Evil. With the biggest parallel, of course, being the both of the titles contain the word Shadow. Nah, but the premise is literally the same. I shit you not. It speaks of a young antiquarian man who's on a vacation. Rather broke, mother fucker might i mention average college student for real for real. he travels let's go by my university lovers coaches and trains to take in the scenery and antiquity of famed places around new england he wants to go to arkham where his mother's family lives but is aghast to find that the ticket costs way too much like in this economy got me fucked up for real. the ticket brother i love how it's called arkham as well like it's so funny that the only thing i could actually consider shadows of evil to would actually be like the batman arkham games like arkham that word in and of itself gives off this like 40s 50s noir vibe there's like a couple tiktok accounts also that sort of post like these paintings that are in the style of shadows of evil like very tall, dark, long shadows being casted, very ornate sort of uh, like railings and uh, art artistry. It's so beautiful, man. Like the, they really went above and beyond here. You can always tell. And mentions that the narrator ought to take the old bus instead, but then maybe he shouldn't. As before reaching Arkham, it'll go through this fishing town called Innsmouth. The narrator's interest is, of course, piqued as he realizes that this Innsmouth isn't even listed on any maps or guidebooks. Hmm. Asking the people around him, all he really gets are dark hush-hush warnings about the place. However, the ticket agent does say that there's not much business to speak of besides fishing and lobstering, and that most people hold strange rumors about the place, from secret cults to devil worship. And he leaves the narrator with an account of this factory inspector who stayed at the hotel in Innsmouth. Gilman House, with the inspector hearing almost inhuman voices in the other rooms that he knew to be empty before he tried to sleep. He didn't dare try to sleep after that, of course. Lastly, there's a man. That's so freaky, man. Imagine getting woken up by all that, bro. That's that's such a good representation, though, of this map. It's the Shadows of Evil. Like, I love how even in the beginning of this map, this map had like some of the most promotional material ever. You can see all the characters get the actual physical mark by doing their own personal sins, right? Imagine so strange it's insane. That supposedly retrieved from the surrounding seas of the town kind of holding this strange eerie aura in its intricate almost other roly designs and materials as yeah the later reports. of course unmoved by all of it though like dude it is so cool how like you can take this concept and just put it in a zombies map and immediately you make it just that much more interesting he so cool to hop on the rickety bus and heads there against all warnings and signs not to the shift from the picturesque scenery gradually devolving yeah. into ruin and desecration shadows evil slow, does that a lot strikingly narrated once yeah. a successful fishing town Innsmouth grew to be anything but with tons of abandoned houses and buildings unmaintained streets decomposing sparse foliage, mold, and worst of all 
this sickening fishy smell emanating throughout that made the narrator queasy as he ventured oh. deeper. The narrator notes that the inhabitants of this town are- So it's relating to the reporter and also it's so crazy because I feel like you could make a whole zombies map just showing the story of before what happened Shadows of Evil. That's how insane the lore is here. First with some sort of physical ailment that causes them to have swollen and unwinking eyes, scabby skin, and disproportionate limbs and spines. The degree of this ailment gets worse the deeper he goes into Innsmouth, which slightly unsettles the narrator. Especially as he sees these fast moving shadowy figures. It kind of reminds you of Silent Hill, like the way it's being made up, where he's just going into some random town that doesn't exist, you know? Like it's all just set up for him to get figures bullied. Move inside what he thought to be an abandoned Masonic church. Finally, letting off the rickety bus at the Gilman House Hotel, he checks in his bag and heads into town, not planning to stay the night, thinking of the factory inspector's very delightful account of the place. He finds most people <laughs> are reticent and reserved, save for one boy working a grocery store who turned out to be an outsider. He's fairly talkative and gives his accounts of the Innsmouth folk, noting how it'd be a useless endeavor to try to pry information out of them. He ends that off by mentioning this 96 year old town drunkard who is notorious for spilling everything about Innsmouth and its legends and tales just after a couple of drinks. Parting ways with the narrator, he hands him a map of the town and all of its places of interest. With the narrator's main quest objective updated, so to speak, he of course sets off to purchase some hooch on the down low, as it's still like 1930, and lures a drunkard to a place off the beaten track after finding him. Dude, this is exactly how Shadows of Evil story beats were set up this is so crazy the imagine the drunker ends up needing a lot of drink to say much of anything the isolated yeah. place they went to ended up being devil's reef a place whose name is pretty fitting as ever also i love the iconic names because again you can see how shadows took inspiration of this so it's like making footlight and just like these random words put together Everyone you know had anything to say to the narrator referred to it as the most dangerous place in Innsmouth, with plenty of tales ranging from the sighting of inhuman figures to human disappearances and sacrifices the drunkard of course slowly opens up as he downs more and more of his drink and the vast majority Bruh. of what he had to say had to do with the town's success being credited to a deal the old founder struck with these foreign islanders who were in contact with inhuman amphibian creatures known as the deep ones oh my gosh yeah so you can see how they took the influence from keepers and apothecans and then just made it like almost like a dueling factions in bl3 right in exchange for human sacrifices the deep human ones sacrifice all the yep. surrounding seas best fishes to work where the fishermen could easily harvest oh. them and they would also give them plenty of gold here and there as well it's the so it was an evil sacrifice to get what you wanted interesting just like how it is Not in here the founders would strike a pact directly with the deep ones that the town would see both its biggest economic success and practical degeneration. It's right. not helped by the fact that the Deep Ones have their own personal agenda in breeding with humans, producing half-human, half-amphibian hybrids whose look diverge more towards that of amphibians as they grow older. Bro, that would have been insane to see in Call of Duty Zombies. Like, half apothecan, half human being hybrids. Like, I guess you could kind of say that that's what the Keepers were, because they do kind of look more human-like, but... I mean, bro, they could have really ran with that idea and made it something really interesting. And, like, with the whole factions idea, like, you could have literally been, like, different, like, aliens or different apothecans or keep... Oh, man, they could have cooked. Now, man. the narrator's reaction to this information isn't that much different from this image right here. <laughs> which any learned person would have here in the fossil of... Yeah, they're like, huh? Walsh propaganda nowadays huh? got me fucked up for real. Just when the narrator thinks the old man is done talking, the drunkard suddenly gets fearful. Like a deer in headlights, he leers out into the open sea. The narrator asks him what's wrong, and before long, the drunkard screams at him to run from what is apparently a horde of nothing approaching, as the narrator realizes. Still, the whole thing. See, that's where they're like, we're gonna put the zombies. That's how we put the zombies in for Shadows of Evil. <laughs> Horde of nothing. As the narrator quickly leaves the reef, with the drunkard having disappeared somewhere else, he heads back to the Gilman House Hotel after scanning the scenes, and it's not long before his rickety bus to Arkham finally arrives. As the worn-out bus reaches to a halt on the desolate road, 
the narrator finds it. I always believe that Shadows was a response to Jimmy Zielinski's uh, transit. And like, there are sort of buses in this map as well. It would have been really cool to see something like what the lore is describing here. Like a rickety bus going to a hotel. I would have loved also a hotel building in Shadows. That could have been really cool. Like I'm thinking like a haunted Luigi's Mansion type beat. Oh my goodness, they could have cooked, man. They could have cooked. Himself confronted with an unforeseen Look at that. The ominous atmosphere seems to seep into his bones. I mean, it would just be so the nice. Sense of impending doom that pervades the air. The driver, gruff and unhelpful, informs him that the vehicle has broken down irreparably, leaving him stranded in this eerie oh, town. Bruh. With a sinking feeling in Get his heart. Get that Ted Transit bus driver, buddy. Accounts of the hotel he is now forced to stay at overnight. The unsettling accounts the drunkard had given him, the reticent behavior of the town's residents, and all the whispered warnings and unsettling accounts of the town's darker aspects all certainly didn't do him any favors either. Yeah, that would have freaked the heck out of me, bro. The Gilman house living before him with its grumbling facade. Clearly, the building is in a state of severe disrepair, as is common in this town. Inside, the pallid and unsmiling receptionist with unnaturally wide eyes and much of the now-established intimate look gives him the room he can stay in for the i do think if i were to give a critique on shadows which i know call of duty zombies struggles with is like the exact thing that he's describing like in the book and the way that the lore is you can feel the actual horror like the wide eyes the soul is sort of human beings you know you can feel that but like in shadows you can't really feel it and it's obviously just because of the nature of zombies but i would love to see like more maps sort of like halt the action and let players explore an environment like that where it's like a hotel and it's just horrifying like really embrace the horror aspect of call of duty zombies i feel like that has really died and they sort of got shy away from it with world war ii when they released that game because a lot of people didn't like all the jump scares but this is true horror like being in an unsettling De like desolate environment that is scary as twilight falls he heads up the creaking dusty staircase with its footsteps echoing ominously the door to his chamber groans in protest as he enters a room frozen in time with dust see faint light frozen in time and again with like the summoning key and the rituals like it would have worked perfectly here man emanating from the single light bulb held on a string on the far end of the room above his bed curiosity mingles with trepidation as the narrator surveys his surroundings the heavy and bitter fishy scent of the town seemed to invade this confined space. He lies down on the bed and continues his reading. However, it's not long before it dissolves into a restless state of unease. The warnings and what? terrifying encounters he's had up to this point, coupled with everything the drunkard had to say, weighed heavily on his mind refusing to be silenced each passage he attempted to read brought forth vivid images of all that transpired in his day thus far it sounds like that's the idea for the cronorium and how that took inspiration see i would not be surprised i remember blundell really explicitly saying how much he absolutely loved this idea of apothecans and keepers and so he literally made the entirety of zombies it to be quite honest, like the Cronorium, that this is what it's described he as set right the book here. Aside, unable to concentrate amidst the mounting anxiety that gripped him. As he shifts in his bed, his gaze wanders to the door with the realization that its lock is missing a bolt. Driven by how uncomfortable it is to be so vulnerable, he rummages around the room and ends up finding a bolt of the same size. He uses his three-in-one device that encompassed a screwdriver on his keyring to busy himself installing it back on the door. It ends up fitting perfectly, and he feels relieved knowing that even though there is no apparent need, the symbol of the bolt security is more than welcome in such an environment. He notes how the bolts on the doors of the surrounding rooms are adequate. See, I love this. It gives this idea of like suspense and it gives you this idea of fear and unhinged. And this is, I'm telling you, you can make this in a gameplay. Like you can, like COD Zombies doesn't always have to be about survival. You can start it off by getting someone to escape like a room, you know, like escape rooms and then put them into that survival. I've seen a lot of zombie maps do that, like Saw maps where they start off with a horror experience and then get into the survival afterwards. It's a very, very smart way to make a game. And he retires back to his bed with a flashlight so that he can continue reading till sleep comes. 
sleep never came. Of right. And he realizes of course. upon analyzing his thoughts that he was unconscious. Shadows of evil. For something, noting how the inspector's story must have really gotten to his psyche. But right. as a weight of drowsiness did settle upon him, an unnerving sensation crept up his spine. Footsteps. No! Furtive and deliberate. No! Downstairs, oh my gosh. Near and near to his door. Fulfilling his apprehensions, the sound of the furthest door's lock being tried permeates the space. He lays frozen, basking in the shock that everything he's heard up to this point might just be true. Could Dude. it just be a thief? He clearly showed his lack of wealth, and he's not exactly staying in the pricier rooms either. With a click, the invader moves to the next door and begins to try its lock. No! And then, finally the door whose lock he had bolted. Realizing its condition, the prowler goes back downstairs, giving up his attempt for the time being. The narrator quickly acts and scours for any avenues of escape other than one through the main stairs and lobby. He tries to turn on the light that he had previously turned off, trying to catch him shut-eye, and quickly realizes that the power has been cut off, confirming that this wasn't just some lone prowler, but- How have we not had a zombies map like that, where somebody cuts off the power? Like, it starts off with power, and then somebody cuts it off in, through the midway, and you're like, <gasps> and you hear the footsteps, and everything goes black like that. Yo, I'm telling you. Somebody needs to make a... Somebody needs to make a map off of this. I'm telling you, this is a whole map layout that's perfectly well written, ready for you guys to take, Just for real. Just what he could not say. His desperate escape plan ends up involving battering through one of the doors and escaping through its window onto the sloping, slated roof down below. For oh the time being, all he could do is wait, though. He hears these voices in the main lobby, confirming the accounts of the inspector as their speech sounds contorted and animal-like. With time, they come back up. Bro, what? The sound of the battering alerts him of the escape as he stumbles into the adjoining room. Glancing around, his eyes fix upon the window, the only glimmer of hope in the nightmarish labyrinth. He clutches the blinds and- The only glimmer of hope is the window, and maybe that's why we sh see the Shadow Man through a lot of windows. In this map, and then also in Ascension, there's actually a level where you can just see the outline of the Shadow Man watching outside through Ascension. Oh, that's so well, like, dude. It's written so well. It's so well thought out. He uses it to descend from the window down onto the roof beckoning below. Then he carefully maneuvers around the slates and glances toward the entrance to the Gilman house, noting a sizable crowd out looking for him. He sticks to the shadows and ventures through the abandoned buildings as to not get caught by the ever-growing crowd searching for him. Yet, there comes a moment where he must traverse a wide moonlit junction where every inch of the street lay exposed. He gets the idea to adjust his gait and posture to imitate the inhumanity of the Innsmouth folk and carefully traverses the junction in plain sight. Inter See, I love that. The in plain sight idea right there. Larry, you like has the disguise like the Innsmouth folk. You know, like that's all these ideas are from zombies, man. It's so Dance funny. Motion from the corner of his vision draws his attention to a distant point in the horizon. There, silhouetted against a shimmering sea, lay the ominous Devil's Reef with the horde of alien aberrant shapes swimming inward toward the town. He hears the pursuit of the groups grow near as he inches his way into the doorway of the nearest building, lucky to have traversed the junction before the pursuers could get there. He consults his junction? map before heading to the derelict abandoned railway out in the sticks as a means for escape. Arriving there, he hears the group converging in such a way that would for sure get him caught if he were to keep walking, so he hides under the railway, guised under the lush foliage and the encompassing darkness. The fishy odor of the town rises to such an extent that he chokes under its nauseating grasp. One of the groups were making their way direct. Oh, and I feel like that is how also the characters in Shadows also sort of succumb under. It's like a, it's like a scent. Not like a, I think in the Shadows it's a pleasant smell. Where it's almost like a sleep gas. It's not, I mean, I guess it isn't either because in the radios it talks about this like unpleasant smell. But it's interesting how they they choose to separate these things, you know? Guys in voluminous robes walking with such a gait that once again confirmed how the pursuers were not human beings. He tries not to look as they make their way through the rails over him. 
but he cannot resist. It casts a sidelong glance. Emerging from the darkness, the horde displays a ghastly sight. The grayish-green creatures adorned with fish-like heads atop anthropoid frames with backs covered in scaly ridged skin and with like Margwas. bulging eyes holding yep. a haunting gaze that bore witness to the unimaginable depths of their otherworldly nature. Some of them even wore the same jewelry he saw before with that ghostly aura he had reported. It's not long before I think the one thing that caught zombies and this map kind of failed to do is like there's like hints of like jewelry and the ritual items and stuff but like I feel like they could have been used more like and I know Revelations was experiencing that with the masks and all that but like utilizing pieces of armor as well in a COD Zombies game could go so far that could be a really cool idea you know not just a shield or plates you know he wakes up in daylight as the rain falls around him with the fishy odor gone and lack of any footprints around him he quickly makes his way out of the town. Before long, he finds himself in a village and freshens up before finally catching the night train to Arkham. He talks with some of the officials there and spends time at his family's house. At a certain point, he goes through his genealogical records. Sifting through his family's history, a foreboding sensation crept over him as he eyed pictures of his grandmother and uncle. He recalls unpleasant oh, memories no. of them from his childhood. Is it going to be his grandparents and then he's going to be part of them? What the sudden disappearance of what the, the but it's not the memories that chilled him it was a strange look they bore no Ian's bro look he looks into the family heirlooms as well and discovers the same jewelry the amphibious creatures were wearing confirming his arising suspicions the uncle was known to have shot himself after a trip of new england not long before the grandmother disappeared and it wasn't long before the narrator started having these strange dreams of his grandmother at the Devil's Reef, beckoning him to join her inside the deep sea. With each passing Bruh. day, the narrator's appearance showed more and more of that intimate look. This is where, uh, listen, I think that this story is incredible, and I think, like, it can be reproduced inside a zombie's map. Like, zombies... And I think what Origins and BO2 was trying to do with Blundell and Mob and all that is, like, make it more campaign-like. Is to add certain elements in it where it's actually literally just a campaign. You walk, you see cutscenes, you interact with things. This would work so well. This is why I think NPCs should be in Zombies Map. This is why I think... A survival aspect should be the final goal of a zombies map, but getting there should be multitudinally different than just starting up on round one. You know, you can you can do so many different things than just loading into a map with a pistol on round one. You know, this is this is the proof that he was metamorphosizing into a deep one as a result of his grandmother's being a hybrid the drunkard had talked about. However, unlike his uncle who had shot himself possibly upon realizing the same was happening to him. The narrator tries, but decides not to. Possibly out of fear, complacency, or out of embrace. And so, driven by an irresistible pull, the narrator returns to the accursed Innsmouth. Bruh, the place no. where his ancestry and the call of the sea converge. Without hesitation, he casts himself into the dark waters, leaving behind the world of humanity forever, in a tribute for what he refers to as the great Cthulhu. Now the earth That's interesting because you know what? That's like also the end of Shape of Water if you guys have seen that movie. They both just fall in the sea and they just accept it. That's horrifying though. This is a, this is horrifying. To make a bloodborne reference is very strange. <laughs> hearing all these tales. All the Souls about, games, man. Yeah. Elder great ones breeding with humans and shit. But at yeah. one point in the distant past, this video was about zombies if you can believe that. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> Insmith and Shadows of Evil are strong. No, I mean I can tell just by you explaining it, but From let's the hear all of, of a them. Cursed town that seems yeah. inconspicuous at first glance to the connection of the two drunk uncles that spoke of the town secrets. Honestly, you might just say it ends there, and that I didn't have to narrate the entire fucking story, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Believe me, not. The 15-hour narration was vital to understand the connection. No, it was Shadow great. Both titles for re following. No, it's it's why the shadows exist. Like it, this map is about like I think a lot of people in storytelling forget to incorporate light and darkness. That's always sort of a theme that goes into all these maps. Shadows of evil. 
I mean, not much light sounds like it's coming out of a map like that, you know? <laughs> Mr. Rapt quickly reveals himself yeah. to be the Shadow Man. So it is the Shadow Man. I was right. Okay. Very cringe ass baby Nene. Like, what the fuck even is a Shadow Man? Love no, I'm gonna be honest. I think it's a cool name. What, like, the Shadow Man? It's so iconic. Everybody knows it too. Rapt is cringing in his grave. Right uh, now. I can't agree. Okay, yeah. Well, these, like, Bajuba Luba, Marastagwa, like, Get this out of here. half this word and end up summoning fucking Beelzebub, bro. Yeah, Shadow exactly. Man had told the reporter to investigate these four guys, and with their contact information, he sets them all up for a trap with simple phone calls. First, a call to this burlesque dancer aspiring to be a famous actress, or rather, a call to her film producer. Po just hate seeing this play in the room. You know, this part of the shot is people cutscene. Just hate it. Thing as a direct <laughs> no lore here. Movie. No explanation. There happened to be a photographer who had compromising photos of her, which would be equally compromising to her success. And so, after that, there he goes. To this corrupt yep. cop, each each of the characters do. Officer, leading each of the characters aspires to something. Yet they go with corruption to get it, him right? To think that his partner was gonna snitch on him. Exactly. For whom he pulled a general shepherd. Then a call to this boxer's promoter, posing as a journalist talking shit. Exactly. Leading the promoter to think that he's backing an unsuccessful act, which leads to the boxer killing his opponent with brass knuckles under his boxing gloves to guarantee his win upon getting win the shit talk, of course. And finally, a call notifying this failed magician that his wife put all all his money into dogecoin and nfts <laughs> yeah that's literally the truth though leading to claim the good old life <laughs> of it's not long before all four of them happen to be at the same burlesque the girl worked at and of course they all faint before waking up in this nightmarish version of morgue city with a strange mark on their hands and of course, hordes of zombies for some reason. Right. Now, the main shtick of the map's gameplay involves the Shadow Man using the four criminals. Of course. Yeah, no, like, this is the main thing of it, right? The main integral tie-in. involve key characters. Yeah. The dancers, film producer, the cop's partner, the boxer's promoter, and the magician's lawyer. Which finally leads to the final step in the Shadow Man's plans, where they perform a final ritual in this hidden ancient temple of sorts. I... I, I would literally pay for Treyarch to do a Shadows of Evil 2. I would love to see this map come back. Like, the noir aesthetic is one of my favorite aesthetics of all time. I would just love to see another map like this. I don't it even care if it's bad. I would just it love it. It that it's because of their service that is complete assimilation of this dimension is shall now proceed. Yeah. And of course, at every exactly. step of the way, the Keepers were trying to prevent just that. But alas, it's far too late to turn back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadows of Evil is like, it's funny because you're actually doing bad things in Shadows of Evil. You're helping out like the Apothkins, which is not good, right? But Richtofen does come in clutch, you, you know? the Keepers and do the totally non-tedious Easter egg of right. which would need me to dive into the the COD Zombies lore ass first, which yeah. is a venture that I cannot do even after my five-hour analysis of Lovecraft. No, listen, I've literally watched a five-hour video and I still don't understand it. Tedious uh, literally. These. But the gist of it is, even after reversing the initial ritual with yet another ritual that traps the Shadow Man inside yeah. the ancient artifact, Unfortunately, Dr. Edward Hussein Richtofen pulls a That's very my boy. last gen, leaving the four trapped in a dimension that is subsequently destroyed the very next day at the hands of the elder gods they themselves foolishly invited. Much to the irony of Apocalypse Averted popping up. When <laughs> yeah, because you literally still die. You're like, Apocalypse. I guess Apocalypse Averted out of all the dimensions, but not yours, I guess, which is. I mean, that's a catastrophic L. Finish the quest. The concept of ancient otherworldly beings manipulating our world and pulling the strings behind the scenes. Shadows is incredible. people to do things they normally wouldn't is also a Lovecraftian concept that is prevalent in his famed Call of Cthulhu, among other works. It's often brought up in these elder beings manipulating humans to form cults dedicated to worship, sacrifice, and crimes against humanity, whether for amusement or for their own benefit. In fact, one of the beings in the Cthulhu mythos 
Kratos has an emote that the Shadow Man shares as well in taking the disguise of a human for the purposes ah. of masterful deceit. A spreading lunacy and driving humans to the brink of insanity is a thing it takes much pleasure in. The map shares parallels with Mob the Dead as well. While it's not directly a Lovecraftian map, Mob shares that same four characters. No, they're all a part of the same dimension. That's why I'm saying like it's crazy because I wonder if Shadows was the story that Blundell wanted to tell. It is wild that there is a human being like Jason Wendell who saw the orig origins of BO2, not like the map origins. I'm saying like Transit and Victus and he's like, I'm going to introduce Cthulhu into this and it's going to work. And he did it. I mean, that's insane, you know? You're stuck in hell at the hands of a higher That's being. insane! Except, but the eight characters, all but pawns in the games of higher cosmic beings, on a scale that renders us humans insignificant in the truest sense. And while the Lovecraftian adventures in zombies are largely attributed to Blundell, a lot of the seeds were planted as far back as Black Ops 1. One could argue that the subtle implications of- So, again, I always have to say, you have to always take into context who created these games. World of War to Black Ops 2 was Jimmy Zielinski. Black Ops 2 to Black Ops 4 is Jason Blundell. You know that Blundell, and that's why I'm saying, he took the original stuff that I know Jimmy Zielinski was not trying to make a Cthulhu storyline. There is no way that this was the goal that he was trying to do. And so he took that and then literally created it into his own whole thing. And I think, honestly, probably what Blundell did was more interesting than what Jimmy Zielinski would have done. Because Jimmy Zielinski was too ahead of his time, the hardware on the 360 for the maps that he was using, the Xbox 360, was not up to par. He would have not been able to get any of these cool ideas out like Blundell did. And so I think changing the director up of Call of Duty Zombies every now and then is a really fun concept to play with. And so now that we have Kevin Drew, it's going to be interesting to see. But again, I do have to disclaimer here. Zelensky did not see Shadows of Evil ever being a thing for Call of Duty. Of you know, we have to realize that. In right? elements from outer space that drove and so it's interesting because when you go back to Shinonuma, right, on BO1 or World at War, you'll see it red here, right? The rock is red. But when you go into the BO3 Shinonuma, it's actually blue with 115, right? And so there's a lot of differences, you know, that like Blundell sort of tried to retcon with zombies, right? And make it his own thing, which is interesting now because he's not even here and we're still writing on the stories that he wrote on. So it's a very interesting thing how this has ended up. Anyone in proximity insane and these strange devices crafted with what seems to be alien tech are a better take on Lovecraftian concepts. As the apocalypse unfolds and Richtofen devises his grand scheme. I don't think, I don't think Zelensky did anything Lovecraftian. I'm going to be honest. I think he was trying to build his own sort of like Area 51 story. It could have potentially gone into aliens and Lovecraftian stuff. But Blundell took it a whole different way. And I think the way he took it was really you well can done. always get the hint that it's all at the hands of some higher malevolent beings, which is all the more hopeless and terrifying than directly getting to see and fight these malevolent beings in subsequent games. Because after all, in the biggest fucking cliche of a line that I could end this with, it's Lovecraft himself who said, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown which is why it works every single time in a zombies map and also it's interesting that he said that because in the great war zombies map i feel like this is where all this build up that blundell was building up for years with shadows and all these maps would have all coincided and so i it's so important for me to watch these videos because i want to make the great war map just like how we envision it just like the goal that he was trying to do and so for me to do that is, it's a privilege, it's an honor, but also I hope we are able to capture the vision as much as we physically can. You know, we can't do it fully, but we can try our best, which is really well done. Rake Fire, this is an incredible video, dude. <laughs> what is this? My man about to sleep, bro. He about to sleep, he giving up. Rake Fire. I'm giving it up here, bro. Again, incredible video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shadows of Evil Explained. Go check out the man, Rigfire Impala. Thank you again so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see y'all in that next one, baby.